Today, we embark on a fascinating journey through the center of the Earth. As humans, the farthest distance we've reached in space is the moon, which is 380,000 kilometers away. The deepest part of the ocean is 11,000 meters below sea level. In comparison, we haven't really gone that deep into the Earth's interior. In fact, we don't know much about what's beneath us. So today, let's explore this mysterious underground world together. All right, let's start digging. A depth of two meters is a usual depth for a traditional burial. In fact, the history of cremation is relatively short. For most of human history, burial was a norm. In the West, burial was practiced because Jesus was buried and resurrected after three days, so they believed burial allowed for resurrection. However, in the East, burial had a different meaning. It's about finding peace, as the idea was that being buried would bring rest to the soul. Why is the burial depth typically around two meters? It's because it's commonly believed that at this depth, burying a body prevents the spread of disease and epidemics. But in recent years, cremation has become more common in the East due to land constraints and hygiene concerns. Of course, new burial methods are emerging, such as tree burials, where the deceased is buried beneath a tree. The idea is that the tree gives life and the soul might attach to it. It's also nice because families can be buried together. Let's keep digging. At a depth of four meters, we reach the depth of Tutankhamun's tomb. It's shallower than you might have imagined, right? This is also the depth of the world's deepest ant nest, dug by a species called the red black slender ant. Let's keep going down. At six meters, we hit the maximum depth that a metal detector can reach. In ancient China, there was a magical tool called the Luoyang shovel, which was used by tomb robbers. This shovel could dig as deep as 10 to 20 meters. Although it's an ancient tool, it's incredibly effective. Tomb robbers in the past used this tool as their essential equipment. Let's continue. At a depth of 12 meters, we reach the deepest place that animals have dug. This was a Nile crocodile's burrow. Moving on to 20 meters, we reach the depth of the catacombs of Paris. Beneath Paris, there is a massive underground cemetery containing six million bodies. How did this cemetery come about? In ancient Europe, burial was the common practice. Paris was a large city for a long time, and many people lived there. Over the years, as more people died, their bodies were buried in the city, and eventually, there was no space left. There were tombs everywhere. Then came wars and epidemics, and Paris ran out of space for the living. So they decided to open up all the graves and move the bodies into a mine shaft, which became the catacombs of Paris. In fact, one of the problems with burial is that eventually, there's no more space to bury the dead. Today, the catacombs have become a museum and attract 500,000 visitors each year. Let's keep digging. At 35 meters, we reach the top level of the tomb of Emperor Qin Shi Huang. The tomb hasn't been fully excavated, so its exact depth is unknown. Using modern technology, physicist Chen Zhaozhong estimated the depth could be between 500 to 1500 meters. If that's true, it would be the deepest place on Earth that's been dug without the use of machinery. However, most people believe the depth is probably around 30 meters. In other words, the top layer is about 30 meters deep and another 30 meters or so underneath that. The historical records say the tomb was so deep it couldn't be dug any further. Now, let's keep going. At 85 meters, we reach the depth of the Derinquiu underground city in Turkey. This underground city is believed to have been built to protect against nuclear war and radiation. At its deepest point, it's 85 meters below the surface, which is equivalent to about 20 to 30 floors of a building. Some areas are taller, while others are shorter and narrower. This structure was clearly designed for shelter, not as a regular living space. Let's keep digging. At 105.5 meters, we reach the world's deepest subway station. This station is called Arsenalna Station in Kiev, Ukraine. Kiev is the central part of Ukraine, but the geology there isn't ideal for building a subway. So, 
They kept digging and the station was built over 100 meters deep. The hard rock in the area made it possible to construct a subway here. Let's keep going. At 155 meters, we reached the deepest hotel suite in the world. This hotel is located in Sweden and is called the Sala Silver Mine Hotel. The town of Sala was once a famous silver mining area, but after 400 years, the silver was all extracted, leaving behind empty caves. The town then had to figure out how to make a living, so they decided to turn the mine into a hotel. Visitors can experience what it's like to stay in a room 150 meters underground. Additionally, the unique acoustics of the cave are used for concerts. Let's keep digging. At 700 meters, we reached the depth of the 2010 Chilean mining disaster. On August 5th, 2010, a copper mine in Chile collapsed, trapping 33 miners 700 meters underground. At first, the people on the surface didn't know exactly where the miners were or how many were still alive, but the rescue operation began immediately. They first tried to reach the collapsed area through other tunnels, but it didn't work. So, they decided to drill a small hole and began drilling relentlessly. After two weeks of drilling, they reached a depth of 688 meters and heard a sound, a clanging noise. That's when they realized there were survivors underground, though they still didn't know their exact location. They followed the sound and kept drilling for several more days until they finally broke through. To their amazement, all 33 miners were alive, trapped in a very small space. They wrote a note and sent it up through the drilling pipe. The note read, all 33 of us are alive, but we are running out of food and water. They had been trapped in a food storage area. Luckily, they were discovered, and the rescue operation continued with the drilling of a larger hole. However, drilling the larger hole took much longer. Once the hole was large enough, the miners were brought to the surface, one by one. It took another eight to nine hours to get them all out. But in the end, all 33 miners survived. This was one of the most heroic rescue operations in history, a true miracle. For years later, the story was made into a movie called The 33. One of the miners was even a former Chilean football player who, after retiring from football, turned to mining. Let's keep going down. At 1,642 meters, we reached the depth of the world's deepest lake, Lake Baikal in Russia. However, Lake Baikal isn't a tourist destination because it is located in a very remote part of Siberia. During the Winter Olympics, the Olympic torch relay even passed through Lake Baikal, where they submerged the torch underwater and continued the relay beneath the surface. Let's keep digging. At 2,197 meters, we reach the deepest natural cave known to humanity. This cave is called the Kruber Cave, located in Georgia. As of now, the deepest point explored in Kruber Cave is 2,197 meters. But in reality, the cave is probably even deeper. Why? Because at the bottom, there's a 100 meter deep water pool and they've only managed to explore down to 2,197 meters. No one knows how deep the cave actually goes as they couldn't go any further. Let's keep going down. At 2,400 meters, we reach the deepest laboratory in the world. The China Jinping Underground Laboratory located in Sichuan, China. Why build a dark matter laboratory at such a deep level? It's to block out all kinds of cosmic radiation and other interference. Dark matter can pass through anything, so at this depth, no cosmic rays can reach it. If the detectors pick up any reaction, it will mean they found dark matter. But so far, no reactions have been detected. Let's keep going down. At 3,600 meters, we find the deepest point where multicellular life has been discovered, the demon worm. Why is it called the demon worm? Because it can survive under extremely harsh conditions. These worms are only 0.5 millimeters long, practically invisible. They feed on microorganisms. Scientists have studied these worms and discovered they can survive in extreme heat, pressure, and oxygen-deprived environments. This means they could potentially survive on other planets as well. Let's keep going. 
At 3,902 meters, we reach the deepest point humans have ever reached underground. For the ocean, the deepest point reached is 11,000 meters, but for the Earth's surface, it's only 3,902 meters. This depth is located in a famous gold mine in South Africa called the Tautana Gold Mine. To reach the bottom of the mine, it takes about an hour. Let's keep going. At 12,263 meters, we reach the depth of the world's deepest hole ever dug. This hole was dug by Russia for research purposes. They spent nearly 20 years digging before they stopped because they ran out of funds. Digging this hole wasn't profitable. However, some say they stopped because they were afraid. The real reason for stopping wasn't just financial. It was because one day, while drilling, the drill bit started spinning at high speed, indicating they had reached an empty space with no rock. After reaching this hollow, they recorded strange sounds. These sounds were dubbed the sounds of hell because they sounded like voices, both male and female, screaming in torment as if from hell. The project managers decided to stop drilling after that. The hole is now sealed and will never be reopened. Who knows, if they ever open it again, it might release something from the depths of hell. Let's keep going down. At 12,376 meters, I mentioned the deepest scientific drilling hole. This is the depth of the world's deepest well, also located in Russia. This is an oil well that reached a depth of 12,376 meters. That's 15 times the height of the Burj Khalifa and deeper than the Mariana Trench. This is currently the deepest hole humanity has ever drilled with machines. Let's keep going down. At 33,000 kilometers, we're talking about the Earth's crust. The crust's main composition is volcanic rock. At this point, the Earth shares similarities with Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Moon as their surfaces are also made of volcanic rock. The rocks you see around you are part of this layer. Let's keep going down. From 33,000 kilometers to 800,000 kilometers, we enter the upper mantle. This layer is also composed of rock, but it is far from the cold, dark underground world we might imagine. In reality, the upper mantle is very bright. Why? It's because of the extreme temperatures. Rock heats up due to immense pressure. When the temperature of the rock rises, it begins to glow. Just like when you heat iron, it starts to glow as it gets hotter. So, the entire mantle is glowing. If we remove the light, what do we find inside? The mantle is full of precious gemstones, mainly green peridot rubies and even diamonds. How do we know this? Because magma often brings up materials from the mantle, and when magma cools and solidifies, gemstones like emeralds and rubies are discovered. The precious gemstones people buy are actually the most common materials found in the Earth. Let's keep going down. From 800,000 kilometers to 2.8 million kilometers, this section is called the lower mantle. The materials here won't be brought up by magma, so we don't really know what's inside. It's likely just more rock, but with even deeper pressure and more intense glowing. There might also be gemstones we've never seen before. From 2.8 million kilometers to 4.8 million kilometers, we enter the core of the Earth, specifically the outer core. This layer, around 2 million kilometers deep, is a sea of liquid iron. How do we know this? Because of Earth's magnetic field. Earth has both a north and south pole, and all magnetic activity is generated by electric currents. Since the rocks deep inside the Earth don't move, they can't produce the magnetic field by themselves. Therefore, scientists theorize that there must be rotating metal deep in the Earth. The outer core is a sea of liquid iron that rotates at high speed, about one meter per hour. The rotation of liquid iron at this depth is enough to generate Earth's enormous magnetic field. Without this rotation of liquid iron, the Earth would have no magnetic field and all life would perish. Scientists predict that every 100,000 to 200,000 years, Earth's magnetic poles will reverse. This pole shift happens very quickly, not gradually. It's almost instantaneous. The remaining part of the Earth's core is the inner core, which is solid iron. Its temperature is even higher than the outer liquid iron, 
but it remained solid due to the immense pressure. Scientists have discovered that the inner core wasn't present when Earth was first formed. It began forming about one billion years ago. So, Earth's core has been solidifying over time and the inner core is growing larger. What will happen when the inner core becomes even bigger? Eventually, the liquid iron layer will disappear, leaving only a solid core. When this happens, Earth's magnetic field will vanish and the atmosphere will be blown away by solar winds. All surface life will perish due to ultraviolet radiation. Before that happens, the only chance for humanity's survival will be to retreat underground into the mantle. So overall, our understanding of the Earth's depth is limited to about 12,000 kilometers, which is only 0.2% of the Earth's radius. We say we know less than 5% of the ocean, less than 5% of the universe, and yet our understanding of the Earth itself is only about 0.2%. Therefore, the most mysterious thing to us is not the universe. It's the Earth itself. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.